so hi everyone today we'll discussing about how uh, how to use auto ml for multi label classification not multi class uh, classification using ludwig uh, machine learning system which is developed by uber so let's get started so basically first of all let's understand uh, what is ludwig like what is uh, its special features so like i recently came to know about ludwig a declarative machine learning framework that can be used for multi label classification and to be honest there are not much options for auto ml for multi label classification that makes it very special so let's first of all understand what is a declarative machine learning framework so there can be three types of frameworks one is uh, flexible for example tensorflow keras where like as a dev you are coding each and every layer of your neural network you are deciding over each and everything in the particular framework that you wish to have the pre processing and everything else uh, giving you a lot of flexibility but you need to code a lot a lot of efforts are required on your end second is auto ml so basically in auto ml what you are doing is you just give the entire framework a, a, a data set and using some black box techniques uh, the auto ml gives you a final result now the problem with auto ml is that ki, uh, the flexibility option is not present uh, you won't be able to touch many things and it always become a black box ki how the mod, how the framework reached to a particular solution now a middle ground between the flexible and the auto ml frameworks is declarative machine learning framework so where, where what is happening is ki you are not coding a lot of things you are just providing the uh, the framework and information ki okay this is the architecture i wish to use this is the pre processing parts i wish to use this is the epochs i wish to use you are providing it some information what you feel should be in the pipeline and the things that you skip okay uh, i'm not very sure of uh, what pre processing i should do for the numerical data set for example so it uses some smart decisions on its own like similar to auto ml and does it for you so eventually it's a mix of both flexible and auto ml where you uh, where whatever you wish to provide uh, in the configuration you can provide and if you are not very sure the machine learning model the uh, the architecture can take care of it so that is why ludwig is pretty popular and uh, let's jump through a query quick example let's see the results and then you can uh, def- uh, decide on yourself so first of all uh, we need to uh, like uh, pip install the ludwig uh, library as i have uh, mentioned in this particular code block and then import the required uh libraries for uh, the particular that uh, for the particular example that we would be running through uh, i have mentioned the link for the data set that i have used uh, it is basically a uh, nlp multi level classification we are using the text i am trying to predict what are the labels uh, related to the subjects like computer science physics mathematics as you can see in this particular image so as you can see that uh, this particular uh, labels are one hot encoded in the training data set you can see ki okay computer is one rest of them are zero so there is just one label uh, there would be cases where we would having multiple labels also given the text and the uh, the title and the abstract uh, so these are the six possible labels that we can have now uh, the first thing that we need to do is that we need to convert it into a format which ludwig accepts for multi label classification so what's that so in uh, so that is nothing but all the labels uh, first thing should be in a particular string in one single string separated by a space and if a particular label has multiple words in it like for example computer science so the multiple words shouldn't be separated by space but by underscore so using this particular uh, function label underscore list i am uh, changing th- i am reading this particular data frame and then uh, converting that one hot encoding into uh, a particular format which uh, ludwig uh, prefers so here you can see the format that we have changed computer underscore science space physics so it has two labels now makes sense so we have the title we have the abstract and then we have the labels uh, the training labels with us now we would be uh, splitting this into train test for our con- uh, convenience only so that we can later on check out what are the results as ludwig does that for you as well now uh, coming to the ludwig part so here is a configuration f- uh, that we need to provide in form of a dictionary so this is in which when i'm talking about python uh, there can be a yml or configuration file json file that you can create and then run to cmd also so that's a different completely different story so in this configuration file is the heart of ludwig uh, where we would be providing all the configs as i told you in a declarative system what we are doing is that dev is providing some information ki, okay these are the things that i wish to use and the rest of the things you can take care so here we would be mentioning what are the things that we require in a system so there are multiple categories in which we can define um, the different thing uh, the different elements we require in the pipeline so let's discuss uh, them one by one uh so the first is input features so input feature is a list of dictionaries with each dictionary containing information about the input feature uh, like the name of the feature the data type i wish to use the pre processing i wish to use in our case we have two columns right if you saw title and abstract so we have two dictionaries present in this particular list 
Here you can see that we have used a prepositing sub called as word tokenizer as space. So makes sense that we need to tokenize words using space. The type has been defined as text encoder. I have mentioned that uh, when you, uh, like for text data sets, uh, there is a special facility encoders because you would be generating some embeddings uh, one way or the other. So how to generate these embeddings using BERT? There are multiple um, uh, models present like uh, parallel CNNs etc. Uh, GPT that can also be mentioned. So here I have you mentioned them as BERT. So you can see that how we can do preprocessing, how we can mention that okay, this is the embedding I wish to generate for the input features. Now coming to output features, so output features is nothing but uh, a, a list of dictionaries similar to input features for the output columns that we wish to have. So here the name for the column is labels. The type is set because uh, we have set it as set because it is a multi-label classification. Remember that is why the label, the type is set, and uh, for the output uh, column we would be having loss functions as well. So the loss function that I've mentioned is sigmoid cross entropy. In other problem statements, this loss function will change the type of the data set, uh, the type of the output feature will also change. Now, uh, coming to third is pre-processing. So pre-processing section is basically general pre-processing that we require. So uh, it can be used for multiple things. Uh, one is uh, the pre-processing that we wish to apply to the whole data set. Now, this can be around split also. Okay, okay I wish to, when I'm training data set, I wish to split the data set into a train test and validation so here it is uh, training is uh, getting 70 percent validation is uh, 10 percent and uh, test is 20 percent so similarly like for example if you don't wish to mention pre-processing separately for each column like it might be the case you will say uh, i wish to have BERT encoding for all the text columns so that can also be provided here key you mentioned the data type and for that particular data type this is the uh, encoder that i wish to use so these are the facilities that Logic provide you can go to the documentation i have provided the link below in the document apart from that the fourth uh, the fourth configuration that we have used is the trainer so trainer does nothing but provides us the basic information on training part that is how many epochs to use batch size checkpoint per epoch we need to have early stopping learning rate optimizer to use etc now there are a few features that have already missed out in this particular thing uh, that you can check out in the documentation part like combiner what a type of model etc so not much required in this particular case uh, now basically how does ludwig works internally so ludwig can provide you option with two types of models one is ecd and other is gbm models but ludwig is known for his ecd models gbm uh, and it is the default option as well so what is an ecb uh, ecd model it is called as encoder combiner decoder so let's get an understanding key how does it looks like so here is the basic architecture that it looks like so different types of columns are present with different data types uh, we have a preprocessing step for each type of column then we encode these columns uh, using some encoder now uh, the embedding generated for each column is getting combined at a particular point now this combination can be adding up it can be concatenating it can be anything you provide it so combiner is also a configuration that we can provide uh, now this Combined embedding is uh, fed to a decoder which produces different output for diff uh, and gives us the output columns as well. It gives us the output column. So this is the ECD uh, combination that we call encoder, combiner, decoder that Ludwig's use. And it's pretty successful as well. So in this particular image, you can see how the different architectures for different types of problems can change. Multi-class, text-to-text, text, uh, then text to pre-trained models. So this is how does the uh, minor changes in the different types of problem can bring minor changes in the architecture and Ludwig can be used for those problems as well. Now, once you have trained the data set, we'll be using uh, the test data set to predict uh, for predictions. Uh, so this is the output for the model dot predict uh, function of the Ludwig model that we have trained. So labels uh, are present as a list and label probabilities are also present as a list only. So you can see that. So what we will be trying to do is just like as a final step, I will try to calculate the F1, the macro F1 uh, precision and recall for this entire problem statement. Let's see key how does Ludwig has performed. So using some particular logic, I think I would be skipping this. This is not necessary for this particular block. We get to a precision of 0.82 recall of 0.74 and F1 of 0.78. Now these results are very, very good. Uh, given the fact that I haven't trained the model a lot. Like I think I trained for just two to three epochs. A uh, second thing. Uh, we haven't touched the data set yet. I haven't done any analysis. I've done nothing. And still, if we get to an F1 of nearly 0.8, it's great. So to be honest, my experience with Ludwig has been great. And I would wish everyone to try it out for different types of problem as it provides you solutions for everything. Almost every major problem statement that you can have, be it sequence to sequence, be it uh, image classification, or be it anything that is related to deep learning.